Welcome back to Cards and Comics, guys. Today I have one of my 90s uh, update videos. I've been collecting a lot of 90s cards again. It's what I do. But this is you know kind of focused on a lot of sets I'm building. Um, I just got back from Florida. Um, went to Disney with my family for the first time ever. My kids are a little older and I feel like they could you know really enjoy it and have fun. But my littlest daughter, you know, my 13 year old, I can consider her a little still, um, she has had major you know, knee reconstruction surgery, had to have her kneecap reattached, and uh, she had an MCL tear. She's in a wheelchair, so it was great to see how well they took care of her, um, and everyone was so nice to her, and she had a great time. So that was great to see her have fun after kind of having a very bum, uh, bummer of a summer vacation so far. All right, on to the cards. Um, so we'll start here with a set that I'm putting together I have a binder with this these cards in them it's a top loader binder so it's still a cool binder but um, this is going to be a binder set and I'm, I'm going to try to get the entire set done I have a lot of the major cards but set you probably seen me show off cards before but this is the 98 uh, crusade I just purchased uh, another big lot of these um, from a, a eBay uh, auction that just ended so they'll be coming in I'll be showing those off and I'll show them off in the binder that way you can kind of see how far I am with the set. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm even halfway yet, but I'm getting, you know, I'm slowly building up. So it's over a hundred cards. So this set's a pretty big set. Uh, here's the Cream Garcia. Again, this is from the Rookies and Stars version of it. Um, and then, you know, here is the Alan Benes. And again, from the Rookies and Stars um, version. So, or um, they were inserted in different products. So Donner's Leaf, um, Stars and Rookies all had different cards inserted into them. I'm, I'm trying to think, did Elite have them as well? So they, they were inserted in multiple products. So depending on what product uh, it was, you got whatever that product had from a checklist perspective. But all the Rookies came from Leaf Rookies and Stars. So if you open that product, uh, you'll get those uh, the Rookies, which there's not many great ones. I think David Ortiz might be in that Rookies and Stars version. Uh, so not a lot of not a ton of great cards in that, in that version, um, as a lot of the rookies never panned out to be Hall of Famers. So it was just like most years. So two Donner's Crusade to start. Uh, next up is I, I did a video on my 97 new pinnacle uh, artist proofs. Here is just the regular pinnacle um, museum collection. So right there, museum collection. And it's Ricky, Ricky Henderson. I love collecting these type of cards, um, f you know, for a lot of reasons. A, they look awesome, but B, they are very economical. This falls under cards that cost less than twenty dollars, so you can get a lot of stars from the '90s and, and inserts like this um, under the twenty dollar range. Sometimes under ten dollars range. Um, you know, Randy Johnson, Greg Maddox, um, Ryan Sandberg, Cal Ripken. Sometimes, I mean, it's just. Uh, people are so focused on Griffey, Jeter, and Frank Thomas, maybe Nolan Ryan from the sets, that a lot of these guys fall down and, and price quite a bit. And I love this card. It's a cool card, and it's, it's a pretty cheap, economical card. Not every card has to be super expensive. Uh, here's some dollar box finds I got at the um, Albany uh, card show uh, a month ago. Uh, Greg Maddox Gold from uh, 98 Floor Ultra, the Pizzazz version. Uh, 97 finest franchises. Very Larkin refractor. Uh, it's a common, but still refractor, and they're still very shiny and cool looking at that time. Here's a cool one 2002 Bowman Chrome. So it's not a 90s card, but it's a 2002, pretty close. Randy Johnson, these are numbered out of 500. I find that really cool. Um, and they're very, still a very nice looking refractor. Uh, finally, um, I found this 91. Uh, Tops Tiffany um, Ivan Rodriguez rookie card. It is obviously the best um, rookie card for Pudge Ivan Rodriguez. Love to get this in a ten. It's really well centered. Um, I don't think any cards a ten for grading. This one has a little bit of a corner issue there, so this is probably like a seven or eight. So it's just a cool card to have raw uh, of Pudge. So next up is a set that I don't think I'm gonna to put together, even though I think it'd be really cool. I just don't think um, I could do it. Um, it's the Donner's Limited from 97, the 
um, uh, limited exposure cards. So here is the common version of those cards, the limited exposures, the counterparts, which have like a player from each league, you know, I think the same position. So here is Ryan Sandberg on one side, and then here you have Julio Franco on the other side. So two good players, two all-stars on front and back with a refractor finish, double-sided refractor finish. Cool idea, cool concept, cool execution. This set does suffer a lot from, from uh, refractor print lines. Um, it's very difficult to find these cards without. But this one is pretty nice. I don't see a refractor line, so that's great. But you can see the limited exposure right there. And the counterparts are kind of the commons in, in this set. The next version that is is the star rookie. So these had a star and a rookie on each side, pretty self-explanatory. And it's sort of the mid-tier uh, insert. Um, and these were, I forget you know, how many, you know, what the ratio is, but they're, they were tougher. So this is kind of like your, you know, your mid-level, second-tier limited exposure. And this is a rod and Nomar. So back then, and even now, it's still a pretty cool combination, cool pairing. And you can just see how nicely designed these cards were. Now the last version of the card, the Star Factors, they are stated to have a print run, I believe it would be 30 or 40 cards, based on print runs and things that were sad. The Star Factor cards are expensive, that's why I don't think you could put this set together very easily. They're not as, not as expensive as like 97, Top's finest, you know, gold emboss or anything like that. Even though I have seen the the Jeter and the Griffey, you know, being listed at over a thousand dollars, for example. So that makes those cards a little bit harder to get and a little out of the price range for what I would want to pay for them, because again, they're not really they're not numbered, and so this is sort of that kind of trust me on the print runs. And there was a lot of stuff going on in ninety seven, ninety eight that makes cards a little bit hard to trust the print runs uh, from those uh, manufacturers back then. So. But we'll see if I if I would love to get the Griffey. That would be a really cool card to find one day. So um, if you'll come on, I don't have one to show off, unfortunately. But if you'll come on eBay or look at Baseball Cardpedia, they are really nice cards. Next up, I bought some just um, common 93 Finest Refractors. I'm slowly building the set. I keep talking about it. You know, this set is just something I just work on. You know, a few cards at a time. So here's Dean Palmer. Um, actually, a really good player from the Rangers. A lot of good years. Um, here is a pirate, Al Martin. But, you know, I'm just trying to get the whole set eventually. I do have the Griffey. I, I don't have the Nolan Ryan, so that's going to be... That's a big one. You have to try to track down. And then former pirate, Doug Drabeck. So I got three finest refractors. And my thing is, is that if I can get them under $20 um, as a common, then to me they're worth picking up. So if I can get these between... You know, 15 to 20 bucks to me i think that's a cool price for cards that are pretty awesome and you know they don't they're just a little fun to pick up and i put them in i have a whole box for my 93 refractors because i have a bunch of them graded as well so one of these days I, I you know i'll do a whole checklist to see how close i am but i'm probably about a third of the way through the set so um here's another set i'm putting together and i talked about it a little bit in some videos i opened a box of this actually recently this is um, 1995 Pinnacle, the white hot card. So this is this is the variation. So you had the red hot and you had the white hots. And the white hots have the Dufex uh, finish on the front. So I'm in, I do have the Griffey and I just decided, you know, just looking at how cool the cards are to try to build a set. I, would, I actually missed out on, on a full complete set of these. And so now I'm just kind of building this set from scratch. And here's the Frank Thomas. Here's the front and the back. The back is foil. The front is Dufex. And they are getting pretty hot. You know, for a 90s insert set that's kind of like, not forgotten, but it's not as, a little more obscure. The Griffey recently sold, uh, I believe in a PSA 10 for you know quite a bit of money i think it was around 1500 bucks or something like that um it was it was a big sale maybe it was over two thousand dollars it was a you know and again these are very condition sensitive so I, I get you know it's a little pop but it's just one of those things where now you're seeing raw selling for a couple hundred bucks eight are selling for like three to four hundred bucks so you know for the griffey so that card is kind of taken off and again you know like uh 
rising ships or you know, rising tides lift all boats or is that the, is that the phrase? So all the cards in the set, you're kind of getting a little bit of a look-see from a lot of folks. So you're seeing some buy now set. So, but I picked up a lot of these. So I got the Frank Thomas, got the Barry Bonds. So those are two pretty cool ones. And then got the Matt Williams, still here as a giant. Got the Paul Molitor. And just to show you that I don't have great record keeping, I already had the Paul Molitor, so I have two Paul Molitors. So I have an extra one if you might want a uh, Paul Molitor. Uh, Manny Ramirez. So Manny was starting to rake at this point. And he was in the set. You have Will Clark um, as a Ranger. So it's cool to see um, kind of like, you know, you're seeing some guys moving around on some teams right now. So Bonds and the Giants. So it's kind of like that second go around for some of these guys. Uh, Tim Salmon. Again, he was a you know uh, in a lot of sets. I actually pulled his Red Hot in a box. Here's Deion Sanders. Really, again, the, these are one of the cooler Dufex cards. You know, some of the cooler Dufex cards that were made. And last but not least, Cliff Floyd. So there it is. This set's pretty big. I mean, I think it's 25 cards total. Um, so it's not one of those 10 card or 15 card sets. You know, it's 25 cards. I mean, that's pretty big insert set, especially with how hard they were to pull. So you're gonna have to open a lot of boxes to get this whole set. So that's why I think it's cool to put it together now. Um, besides, it's just a beautiful set. Um, a set that I'm, my number one set, honestly. So the Crusade set is very important. It's a bigger set, so it's gonna take a lot longer to get it together. But this set, it's only got 44 cards. And it's the 99 um, Stars and Seals holographic domed gold um, cards, the uh, domed gold holographics. And um, here is the Mike Piazza. Again, they're just super beautiful cards. I just, you know, they're refractor on the front and the back. They're metal, they've got a resin finish on the top. They have, you know, they have rounded corners, but they've got this really beautiful refractor finish as well. So this is one of my favorite insert sets of the 90s. Um, and I have, I believe, well over 50% of the set now. I have another card coming in um, this week. So I should, you know, get to my, I'm getting close to 30 out of the 44. So that, you know, that would be a great milestone for me. I've still, you know, this is a set where there's a lot of cards I've never seen. I've never seen a Frank Thomas. You know, I've seen five or six Griffies, but you know, a couple Jeters, but I've never seen a Frank Thomas. So I don't know if someone's hoarding them or they just don't come up for sale or something, but that's a card I'm really looking forward to seeing and buying eventually. But Mike Piazza is a good player and it's cool to get him off the checklist. So, and this is one of the cards I'm putting in that binder with my 98 Crusade set. So um, when I show off my binder, you'll see how far I'm along in my uh, in my set here. Next up is um, cards from one of my favorite sets. Another one of my favorite sets, 99 Bowman's Best. So here's the Manny Ramirez base refractor. Again, these are numbered out of 400. Um, again, you know, most people on this channel know I love the 99 Bowman's Best set. It's one of my first sets I collected when I um, graduated college and got back into the hobby. So this was like the first set I really purchased and bought and paid attention to. Um, sort of my second uh, dip into the hobby after I, I uh, graduated. Bought with my own money, yeah, from working. Here is a 99 Bowman Spess uh, Atomic Refractor Best Performers A-Rod. So again, these are numbered out of 100. You can see it right there, maybe, yeah, out of the light. Out of 100. Just gorgeous cards. I love that refractor pattern. Uh, and I know people talk about the 98. I, I don't, uh, the reason why I like the 99 set, besides the fact it's nostalgic is They've never redone this pattern really again, so I just think it's unique. So it's you know it's it's unique, and I get the ninety nine set or ninety eight sets prettier, you know, but this set is unique. And then here is a Cal Ripken base refractor number to four hundred, and this is a BGS nine five subgrades nine five nine five nine five nine. 
you can see it's numbered out of 400. So that's cool. Um, again, these cards aren't breaking the bank anymore. Um, I would say that the 90s cards have cooled down to some extent for some players and some card sets. You're seeing some availability. Some cards are hitting the market again, so they're not, um, you know, where you, you have these long lag periods where a lot of cards are just not you know, available anymore. So you've seen some availability of some, some cool cards, some little more rare cards are showing up. Uh, you're seeing some volume of cards. So you're seeing sets like the 98 Crusade, you know, well, uh, there was a sell of just a bunch of them um, last week. And so you're seeing some of these cards come out now. That's great. And so it makes it easier to pick up. And it also makes it a little less expensive because if these cards don't come up for sale very often, um, you definitely see it uh, impacting sales. And so I have been able to pick up a few cards a little cheaper here and there. Um, and like this card here, I felt like was a really good deal for me, a PSA 10 auto on a George Brett. George Brett uh, autos sometimes are kind of smudgy from what I've seen. This is a really strong auto. Um, nice card. Just, you know, again, these were numbered out of 2000. So these are such an affordable card. Um, for on-card autos from the 90s of some of the best players. I mean, Sandy Koufax in this set. You just have a lot of great players. Ernie Banks, George Brett, you know, Lou Brock, Bob Gibson. I mean, just a ton of great players. So it's a lot of fun to pick up these kind of cards. Um, and, you know, they're they're fairly um, inexpensive compared to what you would pay. Like this was a you know modern Topps card, probably more expensive than a card from the 90s. And that's what's fun about it. You know, they are on-card autos from from the 90s and they're cheaper than probably cards being made today. Um, it's just how it works. Here is a really um, cool, I, I've always loved this set, 99 uh, Ultimate Victory. Um, being from, at the time this set was issued, I was working in Illinois for Nestle. And so Rick and Kill was up and that Jacksonville, Illinois, where I was working, very close to St. Louis or closer to St. Louis. And everyone was a Cardinal fan. So Rick and Kiel was huge in 99 in that area I was at. So everyone was busting this looking for uh, the Ann Kiel cards, um, the rookie, you know, Rick and Kiel's rookie. And so I was too. And I just fell in love with the set. This was kind of like the first premium version of like ultimate, you know, ultimate victory. I think the victory set was a cheap set. And then the ultimate victory was kind of like the you know, premium version of it. And I just like the set. And these are the um, kind of the hard to get. Um, parallel out of a hundred. They have another version that looks like it's raining. Um, I don't even know if they number, they didn't even name this parallel. It's just parallel 100. <laughs> it's not even like a design. The other parallel kind of looks like it's raining I've, and it's referred to as like the raining parallel. So it's just interesting to see that they didn't even name the parallels, um, on the, on the product. So, but this is out of a hundred. Um, it's a really nice looking parallel. I've always liked these cards and, Right now, they're fairly inexpensive again. Um, it, it's not as popular as refractors from Tom, so you can get those pretty cheap. Uh, next up is a set that I've also noticed um, really going up, and it's the Epic sets. Uh, I think they were 97 and 98 um, Epics. So they're either going to be orange, purple, or green. Orange being the easiest, purple the second hardest, and you get the green. And then um, after that, I think the moments were the hardest version to get. Um, but there's all-star versions. Um, the all-star versions aren't as hard to get. This set's sort of confusing. You, you, you go on Baseball Carpedia, it kind of explains it. They were multiple products. So again, they're like the Crusade set. So like you to get the Epic set, you had to open up multiple products. And you know this is Pinnacle Certified. Epics, and then you can get it from Donner, so you can get it from uh, other products. Um, so it's just, I think, Score um, had, it's like Score, Pinnacle. Um, I'm trying to think all the products that had these Epics cards in them. So it, it was just um, a really confusing, uh, hard to really figure out set. Uh, supposedly the rarest version, I think the Emerald, yeah, not Green Emerald, uh, the Emerald Moment um, card might be the, you know, the rarest. But again, these are you know cards that have um, a lot of let's say um, skepticism on how rare some of them are, um, especially the all-star versions. 
So the all-star versions, if you see, you know, they say all-star on them, those definitely have, you know, from my perspective and just looking at it, a much higher print run than the other Epics cards. So just take that from a grain of salt. They have a great pattern on them for foil. They look really cool and they're starting to gain momentum. You're seeing a lot of cards, you know, kind of, um, hit, you know, bite now is being hit on eBay and people are picking up on these cards. I believe the state of print run was something like 40 or 60 cards total was all printed. If you look at the print runs and do the math, uh, they're not numbered. So I'll show you the back. They're not numbered. So, you know, you, you can't you know, go by that solely because, you know, it's just, it's, it's an estimation, but you know, the first run of these cards, you know, feels like they are pretty rare they don't come up all the time. So, and you get pop reports on PSA, you know, you can see, you know, they are, you know, oranges are easier to get than purples and emeralds are the hardest. So it's, it is kind of lining up. So I don't say it's all bunk, you know, like, you know, the print runs, but you gotta understand, like there was backdooring cards happening. Um, and so you just have to be careful in the nineties, especially the later pinnacle skybox cards, because they, there are a lot of shenanigans happening. Even tops had stuff backdoored. So it's just tough. You know, you really have to look at, everything you have to look to see how often the cards are sold look at pop reports and psa to really understand you know where's a lot of these backdoored or is he truly rare uh, that kind of thing so but this is just one of my favorite uh newer inserts you know newer to me you know like i said i'm just kind of collecting for the first time um so it's fun to to kind of pick him up and and um you know something new to chase in these 90s um sets and then Here's a card uh, I picked up recently because I have the the gold or uh, so this is a sterling. I think the one I have is a titanium, the gold. So it's number to fifty. This one's number to out of five hundred. And so I just need the base Ivan Rodriguez now to complete the rainbow, uh, to have all three fusions uh, from nineteen ninety nine Skybox Molten Metal. That'd be awesome to have a full rainbow, uh, including the gold. That's pretty tough to hit like that. I also have the Jeff Bagwell uh, gold as well. So I have two of the golds uh, from this set. I almost, I tried to get the, the Frank Thomas, but it was just a little out of my price range. Uh, and again, the Griffey would just be a, a, an astronomical card. And you can see the numbering there, 112 of 500. And last but not least is a, is a card, you know, an autograph card from uh, the 2000s. So it's right on the edge. Um, but this is Upper Deck Legends. I love the set. I love the uh, Willie Stargell from the set. But here's a Jim Palmer autograph. So kind of a, you know, not a um, huge card. I like with the George Brett. Very economical. So this is my 90s mail day. And again, a lot of these are for sets. Again, you know, I'm hitting this, I got this rainbow now. Um, so you see a lot of cards in here are for sets or, or things I you know, collect. I, I really collect the 99 Bowman's Best. Um, and then, you know, you'll see things like I'm putting together the white hot set, um, putting together this set, you know, so if you look at it, just a lot of cards I'm putting together in sets here, you know, like 98 Crusades. So it's a lot of fun to kind of collect and also put cards together, put them in sets, put them in binders. Um, it's, it's kind of like going back to the real roots of the hobby, putting things together. Um, getting the entire run versus just one or two players. And that's a lot of fun. And I'm still player collecting heavily with you know, Griffey and Thomas and somewhat Jeter and some football. You know, I picked up some Reggie White and Sanders cards. So I'm full on in the collector mode right now. I'm not really trying to flip cards. I'm really not selling cards right now. Just collecting for fun. And uh, hopefully when I go to the National, I'll be able to continue picking up a few cool cards and, and uh, can give you some reports from there. But... It's coming up quick, guys. Nationals coming up, so hopefully um, I can see some of you guys there. Um, pretty, I'll wear my Cards and Comics hat, so if you if you see me with that hat on, please say hi. But um, I'll be do, doing a few more videos um, from now to the National, but looking forward to it, and hopefully see you there. And I'll see you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.